Steve, nice to see you. Hi, Helene. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So how would you assess the move you've made uh, between yesterday and today? Um, <laughs> there weren't that many moves. I'm just refreshing my memory here. Uh, you know, we had our, we, when we moved three of our pending unrestricted free agents, um, kind of what we expected to do as you're as you're leading up to the deadline you, you kind of get a good gauge of uh you, well you do get a good gauge of who, what interests there are in your players and which teams have interest and kind of get a good idea what you think you're going to what the return is going to be on those players and uh, um so pretty much went for the most part as expected are you pleased with i mean especially being able to add a second rounder i mean that's what you pay for next yeah yeah you know um am i pleased uh you know we 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 uh, as you know we acquired nick for a second round pick uh, la uh before last season um we got to use him for the seat for the year he, he he did help us a lot he did help our defense help philip uh uh moritz and uh and gus lidstrom you know on the left side played with those, all of those guys a little bit so um you know it's we discussed the contract extension weren't really able to agree on anything so nick was going to become a free agent so at least you know we tried and it was it was good um and we were able to re recoup the second round pick we gave up so i think all in all it worked out okay well i have you, you can just share your thoughts on uh the job jeff blashell has done this year and your thoughts on his future well i think um you know, we're here to talk about the trade deadline, Helene, and the moves that we made. So uh, this has been an up and down year for us. We've had a lot of progress. The last six weeks of the season have been disappointing for all of us and give or take six, the last six weeks. So, uh, you know, we'll, Jeff and I will sit down at some point and, and talk about our team and where we're going with our team and what we need to do. But I don't think this is the time to, you know, really discuss our coaching staff or our coach for that matter. Last one, then just on the trade deadline, were there any inquiries or like um, any, any teams touching base on any of your signed players that piqued your interest or? No, not really. No, superficially or briefly as you, know, you have conversations uh, going up to the deadline, you, you know, you have conversations prior to the draft and periodically through the season. You talk about your teams but back and forth and uh, um, really got, you know, nothing beyond that. So no, there's nothing. Uh, um you know regarding any of our any of our signed players restricted free agents that was uh ever even close to that you would consider a an idea thanks steve ted colfin hey steve how would you describe the market overall was it i don't know was it flooded out there or just wasn't much traction anywhere or what do you think uh specific to what ted the red wings or in general a little bit of both well, with the Red Wings again, um, you know the players that you know the free agents that we had that that uh, garnered interest were the ones we expected. Unfortunately, a couple of our, our uh, UFAs um, were also injured uh, and, and have been out for a while. So teams, you know, trying to make the playoffs usually aren't looking at that. So uh, I think we weren't really caught off guard by anything that we were approached upon or the players that we were approached upon with our organization. So it kind of went for the most part as expected, you know, uh, you know ex exactly what all the three deals we made were, we figured they were going to be somewhere in there. You're always hoping that, you know, you might get a little more here or there, but pretty much what we expected uh, to return for the, the players that we got, that we moved. Is there anything the market is, oh, I'm me? sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. I didn't have anything important to say. Go ahead. Were you close on anything else? No, no. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks, go to Ansar Khan. Yeah, Steve, uh, just your thoughts on the on the two players that you acquired from St. Louis, uh, uh, Sundquist and uh, 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 Wallman. Well, um, on on I'll start with Jake Wallman. I guess a left shot defenseman. Um, you know, was uh, playing behind some pretty good players in St. Louis. We kind of watched him for a while, going back to uh, um, his days at Providence uh, uh, and kind of followed him through the minors and 
had some uh, discussions with Doug earlier in the season when he was looking at doing some other things. Uh, so anyway, what we get is, you know, uh, uh, he's got an opportunity. He'll get some opportunity to play here. We think he has a chance to be a regular in the NHL and just hasn't been able to do that behind a pretty good in with a pretty good defense core in front of him in St. Louis. But he skates well, shoots the puck hard, pretty competitive uh, left shot defenseman. And as you know, we don't have... Uh, um, I think our only left shot D man signed right now is uh, is Jordan Osterley for next season. So um, we, you know, with the acquisition of Oli uh, Ulevi and uh, with Jake, a couple of guys that you know we get to try out and see how they do and decide if they where they fit for us for next year. In Oscar, uh, you get a big big right shot forward, another right shot. Unfortunately, uh, you know, with Lucas Raymond in the lineup, Sam Gagne in the lineup, and Mitch Stevens and. Uh, Carter Rowney, both um, injured our right shots. And uh, really the only one signed for next year at this point uh, was Lucas. Um, it was an opportunity to bring in a guy, one, a, a bigger body that that plays on the right side, that is a good penalty killer, uh, that we felt, uh, you know what, he'll improve us in the, it felt, he really fit a need or filled a need for us, particularly on right wing and uh, in, in the size and the ability to kill penalties. And also, uh, just regarding Mark Stahl, I know uh, with his no movement clause, he had a say in whether or not he would go. But have you had discussions with him uh, as far as his futures, uh, signing to an extension, or what? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, it's something to consider for sure. We, you know, um, we went through the season last year and, and into the off season, and then ultimately decided to bring him back. As I said earlier, uh, answer we we. Uh, we're going to need defense on the left side. Um, Mark's been a, you know, a great addition on and off the ice for our organization. And that's certainly why I can't make any commitments to anything right now. Um, that's something that we will consider um, between now and July. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Max Boltman. Hey, Steve. I believe... Um Jesse Wallen was with St. Louis when they drafted uh, Jake Wallman. Did that help the kind of the familiarity and knowing him and a kid and, and what he brings, or was it all just what you had seen kind of pro scouting him? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, you know, even going back to the, the time in my time in Tampa, we uh, kind of had my uh, eye on him at, at one point and did, you know, did our work um, watching him as a player in college really. And then just have followed his game, you know, through the minors, even when in watching him play when they'd roll into Grand Rapids and play. Um, but I have a pretty good handle on uh, what he is as a hockey player and 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 the person as well. We think we have a pretty good idea. I didn't necessarily have to pick up the phone and call Jesse at this stage, but uh, I'm sure and I don't recall off the top of my head, but we would have conversations with him in the past about it. But I have a pretty good idea of what we're acquiring. Kind of looking ahead a little bit. Dylan and Tyler, obviously both one year left after this. Is it a priority for you to get uh, kind of some done on an extension with them this summer, or would you be comfortable going into next year if they are pending UFAs next season? Um, well, you know, my hope would be to, uh, you know, you know, sometime between now and next uh, uh, 18 months from now or whatever is to sign them to extensions. I can't give you, you know, we can't do anything before July 1 of this year or, um, but yeah, my plan would be to sign them to extensions. They're good players. They're good people. They like playing here and, and they've played very well for us. So I certainly hope to do that. And that's what we'll try to do. And then just in the shorter term, do you see any possibility to add to the roster in terms of your prospects you already have this year? Like would, is Jonathan, Jonathan Berger in consideration for a call up late in the year or any of the guys who may or may not come over from Europe? Yeah, the, uh, we got a bit of an issue with the guys over in Europe. Uh, two, two, re two things actually. With a, until they get the double IHF agreement uh, signed, um, any of the any of the unsigned kids that we would hope to sign and bring over, we can't do that until that agreement's in place. And then, and we can't get the contract. Well, then we can't get the contracts registered, and then we can't get their visas to get over here. So that's a bit of a challenge. As far as, you know, we would look into as their seasons un, uh, wind down, the kids that are under contract that that have visas, try to get them over if we could. As far as recalls from uh, from Grand Rapids, I would say Jonathan Bergeron has had a very good year. We're pleased with 
his play. He's gotten better uh, from start to, to this point in the season. He's worked extremely hard. Um, he's an important player for us there. It's something to consider. I can't really promise or guarantee Max that we'll see him here, but it's certainly something to consider. What I've liked about him being there, he's got some stability. He knows where he's he knows where he's playing tomorrow night. He knows who he's playing with. He knows his role, and he's not sitting there wondering, "Am I getting called up? Am I am I in the lineup? Am I out of the lineup?" And he's playing well and an important player. So I'm happy with him there. And and we're in a dogfight for the playoffs in, in GR, and that's important. I want to make the playoffs. So I kind of trade that off with maybe seeing him up here. But he certainly improved his play. Uh, uh, throughout the course of the season and and it's definitely something that is on our minds is do we want to see him up here but i'm real happy with how he's played to this point uh, in grand rapids and then last thing was did you make joe valeno eligible for the ahl playoffs today or is he yeah we did max yeah okay. all right yeah. Great. thank you yeah he and 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 taro uh Hirose will both be eligible for the playoffs okay great all right thanks steve yep Brad galley steve thanks for doing this with us uh we've grown to expect the unexpected with you in so many cases. Uh, I know you said today when it is expected, but did you wake up today with the hope of maybe coming up with a creative deal with guys under contract? Did you think that there was a possibility for it? Uh, no, not really. We were focused on the, the, the trades that we made today. And, um, you know, I know I, I don't, I don't really say a lot. And, um, I think a lot of times people, uh, it, it's very misconstrued that I'm up to something, I'm really not. And uh, I just, I know, as you know, I prefer to keep things quiet to myself. Um, I'm not trying to do the unexpected. I'm not trying to outsmart people or trick people, or anything like that. I just, I just don't believe that, that a lot of things need to be shared. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Bob Duff. Steve, both the guys you got from St. Louis have some pretty good size. Was that part of the attraction to them as well? Uh, yeah, I, you know, yeah, it, it really was, you know, like again, in acquiring, um, Jake, uh, left shot defenseman is, uh, is a need for us and right shot forwards and, and, you know, um, you know, good, you know, we all love good, big players. We love good little players. We love good players in general, but I think, you know, um, more so than just big, it was, we, we kind of addressed the need. Like we want to try out Jake on the left side, on the blue line, see how he does. As I, you know, I've said a couple of times, we don't have those guys under contract. Uh, so there's opportunity here and this is a good chance to try some you levy. It's a chance to try, uh, Jake Wallman out and see how they do. But, um, again, um, uh, for and Oscar on the, on the right side, Again, a big winger. He does kill penalties. He's a very good penalty killer. He can kind of go up and down your lineup a little bit. But uh, you know, uh, having some big bodies out there is is important as well. And uh, Sunquist, obviously a Swede. If you know things go according to plan for you guys, you could have a lot of young Swedes coming in in the next few years. Is that just a happy coincidence that he's an experienced Swede, or did that at all? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a coincidence that he happens to be Swedish. For, but for what it, uh, for what it's worth, we've gotten rave uh, reviews on his character and the, his popularity in the locker room uh, in St. Louis. So I'm, you know, that I'm very happy to hear that. That uh, uh, you know, much like the addition of Mark Stahl to our locker room, um, you know. Uh, you know, veterans that, that have been around that are good guys that, that can really create a good atmosphere or help build a really good atmosphere in the locker room. But it, it's a, um, yeah, just really a coincidence that happened to be another Swedish player. Okay. Thanks. Art right, Ragnar. Hi, Steve. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking, uh, kind of piggybacking what, what Max said about Bergren. Are there any other maybe players in Grand Rapids, perhaps like a Sobrango, maybe even a McIsaac or anybody that you see could come up to Detroit before uh, these 20 games are played? Um, I think on the blue line, really, we, you know, you mentioned the young kids that have played very well. We do have eight, uh, eight D here, including Danny DeKaiser, who's on, on IR that uh, I think is close to coming back off IR. We have eight here. Um, uh, with Donovan, he's young. Uh, there's, you know, there's not really a need with having eight here unless we run into injury problems to, to recall them. But we would really defer on the defensive side to uh, to the to the veterans like a, a Danny Renouf or um, um, 
uh, Brian Lashoff, um, probably be the two guys we would lean to on the D if we were to call up uh, any 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 of our D men. The young kids, uh, I think they'll they'll stay down for this year, anyways. Yeah, I know that uh, the college season is ending, or the uh, the NCAA tournament's about to start. I, I, are you you know looking at maybe some unrestricted free agents at the collegiate level? Or I, I know you're not going to tip your hat, but I mean, is that is that a possibility? Yeah, you know, like the rest of the league, we're following the, the free agents in college, and uh, um, you know, there's there's some of interest to us for sure. You know, the problem is there's really 32 teams, uh, you know, competing for them, and if we if we get, uh, you know, if you get one, you're you're pretty happy with it. But we're all following it, and we'll see what happens. All right, and finally, Steve, I you know, would you characterize this trade deadline as a lot of sellers and not enough buyers, meaning that there were buyers, but they seem to be a handful of teams that really think that they have a shot at it. Whereas maybe sometimes last year, it seemed to be a little more wide open. You know, this, uh, uh, I guess um, it was a, I don't know from your all perspective, mine little, little strange and some deals I didn't see coming. Some I thought were great deals and uh, um, you know, I just, you know, some of the, the heavyweights are really going all in this year. And there's a, a, a few of them that are, are, are you know, they, they did whatever they had to do to improve their teams. I think it was more so just the, uh, I don't, the, the situation we're in with our, our cap remaining flat uh, for the last couple of years uh, as, as um, kind of hamstrung a few teams maybe. And, you know, I can't speak for the teams that are, kind of on the fringe, you know, maybe in a wild card spot uh, or just outside deciding, hey, we're going to improve our team to, to or not not try to do anything based on what we see at the top of the league. I really don't know, but that's kind of what I look at. The, is an un- Again, we're still coming out of this uh, uh, period of, uh, of the flat cap, which has hamstrung some teams. And, and, the, and again, the, the, the top teams are decided, like, we're going to go for it. And... Uh, um, it's made it pretty interesting. It's going to be a pretty wild, uh, you know, four rounds of the playoffs. I, you know, I, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, I, we're a long way away from it, but it's going to be an exciting playoffs, and particularly our division is going to be incredible. Yeah, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, I can remember those days at the Joe. I mean, trade deadline was uh, was like Christmas Day for the Red Wings. So, I mean, guys that uh, that you used to acquire. But anyway, I can go on forever, and I won't. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Art. Kevin Allen. Hi, Steve. Thanks for doing this. I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, some of your uh, players uh, in Sweden, in particular, uh, Solar Bloom and Edvinson. I mean, they've obviously had a terrific season. I, I, what is your take on those guys and how they've performed for you guys? Yeah, they both have had uh, outstanding seasons. Um, you know, I personally have not been over there, but we've got uh, you know Nick Cronwall, Nick Lidstrom, Hawken, Thomas Carlson. Uh, we've got several people in Sweden that have been there to watch them play. I've seen a lot of video. Um, you know, Simon has done extremely well. Similar, uh, you know, he's not he's he's a different player than Moritz Seider, but he's had a real impact for you know a 19 year old in in a very good league. He's had a great tremendous impact in the Swedish league. Um, and obviously we couldn't be happier with the development of uh, Elmer. He's just, you know, continued to get better. Um, you know, when we drafted him, we were, you know, we had him over here and he was a tremendous athlete and with great potential. And he's just gone back to Sweden. He's worked really hard on his game and uh, he's getting more and more confident. And, you know, I get all these videos and seeing him shooting the puck in the net and it just looks like he's really, really, you know, maturing. Both of those kids are in real good programs uh, and good organizations, and and they're developing really well. So it's very encouraging. And got a couple more over there too that we're real happy with how they're coming. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, uh, they're both just getting ready for the playoffs. The Swedish playoffs are about to start, and see how um, you know. You mentioned uh, Elmer and Simon. They're on two of the better clubs in the league and uh, uh, see how they do. But they're, you know, they're, they're developing very well and it's very encouraging and uh, look forward to getting them over here at some point, hopefully sooner than later. All right. And then finally, 
I just wanted to ask you quickly about, there was a lot of discussion about the teams with some cap space and the revenues, of course, was one of them, um, you know, might be uh, given the opportunity to take uh, players from other teams to create cap space for them. Did that ever happen? Were there any of those players or just never materialized that, you know, teams were off? Yeah, we talked about that with a couple of different teams and um, on simply just like the pass through trades or whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure if any of those actually went down. We're still kind of waiting for these trades to follow through, but there was some, some discussion on trades where you're taking on a contract Contract. Ultimately, there was nothing like, uh, you know, you weigh the, the, uh, uh, the you know, and the, when you're taking on a contract, what, what you, you know, in some cases, what you're getting with that contract, and then what it does to your, you know, your cap and your, 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 your team the following season. So we had to be real careful. Some of the, you know, the ones like we did last year, I think we got a fourth round pick from Tampa to take a little bit of cash. That was an easy one. Like we're just there to facilitate. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't hamstring us in the future. It's, we did have the cap space. We did have the cash available. So uh, there was a couple, you know, we were, teams had reached out to see if we'd be interested in doing that. And we were um, ultimately we weren't needed. So, um, you know, and there was a couple of opportunities maybe to take on a contract um uh for a, a, and and a, an asset with it but never really materialized uh for various reasons whether it was ours or the other clubs thanks steve last question trevor thompson i uh, appreciate your time steve i've only got one question for you um you talked about uh nick not uh wanting to resign or couldn't get a deal done moving forward and you may have other plans on d so i'm not sure about stetcher but uh, Nemestikov seemed like a guy who wanted to be here and fit in. Uh, is that a guy you might look at re-signing in the offseason, or would you move on? Is that an opportunity for a younger guy, or what are your thoughts on him specifically uh, moving forward? Thanks. Um, yeah, Trev, uh, you know, uh, Vladdy, you know, here for the better part of two seasons, and I thought really played well for us, and we enjoyed having him. He's a good guy. Um you know he's a he's a member of another organization now so i can't comment on 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 uh you know on players under contract with other teams but again we're you know we'll 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 have we've got expiring contracts we have, we'll be looking in the free agent market to uh to improve our club again next year all right those were all the questions we had for steve thanks everyone for joining us tonight